This is Jenny Stewart, Vice President of Consulting with Construct Software, and we're going to talk a little bit about Kanban WIP limits. These are often called work in process or work in progress limits, and I'll just refer to them as WIP limits. There are a number of different types of WIP limits, ranging everywhere from an individual WIP limit all the way up to full or sometimes considered robust WIP limiting. Uh, kind of one of the important things to know about this is if you choose any of the WIP limiting approaches other than full, your Kanban state is really what's considered proto-Kanban. You're not quite Kanban yet, and you probably want to be talking about how to move yourself up towards full or robust WIP limiting. The first type is individual WIP limits, and it really kind of is just that. I myself personally have a WIP limit. Say I have a WIP limit of two. I can only be working on two things across the entire board. I might actually have a visual indicator that maybe indicates something like a big item and a small item, my primary task and my secondary task, but my WIP limit applies to me and only me. The next type of WIP limiting is called CONWIP. And in CONWIP, we have a WIP, it's constant WIP. We have a WIP across the entire board. For example, we might have a WIP here of six across our board with the stages development, testing, and PO review. So that system will actually allow us to bring one new thing onto our board because with the five tickets that we have here, we are one under the constant WIP across this board. The next one is aggregated team whip limits. And I'd say this is more like, let me show you an anti-pattern than an actual whip limiting approach. So a number of people will kind of ask, well, does this whip limit really apply across both in process or in progress and done? For my development three, isn't that just three on the in process column? Does that really have to apply to the done column? And if you do set it up this way, which I don't recommend, what you really have here is you have kind of a couple of different Kanban boards. You have an input queue for development, you have an in-process queue in development, and then you have an unbounded done queue at the end of development. That unbounded done queue inside of development is kind of the input queue into testing, and then they have their own set of columns that they're doing. The problem with this approach to whip limiting is it doesn't optimize the flow across the board for the entire team. Really, it's there to just optimize individual engineering busyness. Is development as busy as they can possibly be? Is testing as busy as they can possibly be? And if you're doing that, the likelihood is you're actually sub-optimizing that team's ability to flow work from the next column all the way to the done column. So this is an approach that we really don't want to use. Uh, I just typically use just as an example of why that whip limit of three in development crosses both in process and done. Ultimately, the state that we want to get to for most teams is we want to use full whip limits. And so each column on our board has a whip limit. That whip limit applies across both in process and done. And in being able to do that, we want to tune those WIP limits so that the flow is optimal across that board. There's not more analysis work than can be developed and tested. We're not developing more work than the analysis can handle. We're not developing more work that the testing can handle, that we've kind of optimized how this works across the team. Now, if you're doing really wonky things, maybe we want to talk about perhaps the staffing of the team isn't right and all of that. But those are kind of considerations for unique perspectives that you may need to have. What you want to be doing is looking at your team and saying, how do I best optimize the WIP limits for the flow across the board for the skill set of this team? And if something looks wonky, we're going to deal with that kind of outside of the Kanban WIP limits. How do you set WIP limits? Well, really the ideal is it's 1x per available stage resources. People are going to be most productive if I'm doing one thing, not trying to do four things. That said, I've seen a lot of boards where, say, there's a team of five people, but if you go put all the whip on the Kanban board, you're sitting there looking at 15 or 20 items. So they are well over one. And a lot of times I'll use a starting point of 2x available stage resources. That at least gets us away from four or five over where there's just a massive amount of whip on the board and to a reasonable starting point where people are starting to feel like they're not 
overwhelmed by the work. They can be pretty focused and they could be pretty productive. From there, we're going to experiment and optimize, generally turning those whip limits down until we find how things flow across the board. We might play a little bit where, where they are placed. So we might say, although we have four developers and that really means eight whip limits, at least some amount of their time is spent in the testing column, either testing a different developer's work or helping out with test automation. We're actually going to use some of those whip limits in the test column because that's where that person actually spends their time. What we want out of WIP limits is we're really looking to enable what we call a pull system. We're not, I'm done, I'm pushing the work to the next stage. We're really saying, is there a slot available? So here in our development stage, we can see we have a WIP limit of six. That means we have six available slots in that part of the board. And therefore, we can pull something from engineering ready into development doing. Why do we want to do this? Well, the reason that we want to limit WIP is reduced WIP leads to decreased lead time and increased throughput. If you've ever been on a team and you felt like everybody's super busy, but it seems like nothing's getting done, it's probably because you have too much WIP. And reducing WIP allows us to be focused. There's a smaller amount of work in the system, therefore it gets more of our attention. Therefore, it's going to move through the system more quickly. What we're trying to do is get away from that fallacy of doing more will get more done. And if you've ever sat in a traffic jam, you probably realize that just because you can shove cars onto the freeway, they would fit on the freeway, doesn't mean they're going to flow through the freeway. They're not going to move very quickly. If you've ever been dumped out of an office during a snowstorm, all of a sudden the regular traffic is just insane traffic. You can realize the just the amount of it doesn't move the way we think we move because there's just more in there right now. What we want to do is find the sweet spot. You could also reduce whip to the point where you would starve a system. Most people don't have that problem, but you can do it. What we're trying to find is that beautiful sweet spot where there's just enough that things are moving through the system as fast as they possibly can. We feel productive and what we're building is of high quality. We usually look at a metric called cycle time to start looking in that. Cycle time is the time it takes for a work item to be moved from the input queue until it's in the done stage across the entire board. An average cycle time is an interesting thing for a team to look at. And what you see if you look at the relationship between these two, and you can always use your own data to look at that test, is there is a relationship between average whip and average cycle time. If you reduce the average whip in 50%, assuming you're well over, which most people are, you're going to see that same reduction in lead time. And I've seen this borne out time and time and time again with teams where all of a sudden we really start to focus on limiting WIP to be optimal for that team. And all of a sudden they just seem like they're so much more productive. That's really what we're trying to optimize here. We're trying to optimize how the team works, how it's able to deliver value from request to final delivery. I hope that that's given you a little taster of what WIP limits are and what WIP limits can do. Go forth and Kanban.